I'm James Hype, and this is my honest opinion on pre-recorded DJ sets. So last week, I went a bit viral on the internet because I saw something that really annoyed me, and I had to speak out on it. A few weeks ago, I played EDC Orlando, and somebody sent me this Reddit post, which I'll read out to you right now. The post says, so which artists were actually DJing at EDC Orlando this year? Um, and they've written underneath. I don't mean this as a dig against anyone. I have nothing against pre-recorded sets, especially at a big festival where artists might not want to take risks. Just wondering who was actually DJing live. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. The top comment. I think Deadmau5 said it's really rare for anybody to do live sets anymore at events like EDC. And they are almost always pre-recorded to aid with production. But I wouldn't be surprised if James Hype was mixing it up. Thank you. Thank you. Someone's replied to that saying, he also said most festivals require a pre-recorded set, not an option for the DJ. I have played at 95% of the biggest festivals in the world. Really, honestly, I've done Tomorrowland, EDC, Perucaville, Queenfields, Lollapalooza, and so, so many more anyway, so many more. Never once, never once have I been asked to give the festival a pre-recorded set. No one has ever asked me this. And... I don't think that this actually happens, right? So I don't know where this dialogue came from that when you play a festival, you have to play a pre-recorded set, but it's clearly not true. Now there's this dead mouse clip of something that he said on a stream ages ago saying that most DJs play pre-recorded sets at big festivals and some festivals require you to play a pre-recorded set. I'm not sure how much truth there is to this. But I'll show you the clip. Most major festivals, you have to play a pre-recorded set. Like EDC, I would be surprised. Now, I'd seen this Dead Mask video before when it first went online. And I actually left a comment saying, no, this is not true. This is not true. I've never been asked to play a pre-recorded set. And I thought nothing more of it. And then when I saw this Reddit post, I was like, Shit. People actually believe that you have to play a pre-recorded set at a festival. And it's not true. And there's so many music fans in the world and so many DJs who are now under this false impression of reality. Now, I'm not saying that pre-recorded sets don't exist because I'm sure they do. And there are artists who do play pre-recorded sets. Even There's some artists who've been playing the same pre-recorded set for two or three years. And that's just wild. But what I want to make very clear today is that that is the artist's choice and that is not that is not something that the festival or the event tells them that they have to do. Now, a second thing that I keep seeing is people saying, oh, you have to pre-record so that the lighting can sync up with your set or that the, the fireworks go off at the right time. That is also not true. So there's a piece of software called Show Control, which connects to the Pioneer DJ setup and allows the lighting engineer and the firework guy to read what the CDJs are playing. So they can see every track at the right time and they can see where the drop is and they can even use a time code system so that the lighting will go off automatically at the right point in the track. Now, I use this for some of my shows with my lighting engineer who travels with us sometimes. And okay, it's not a perfect system, but it does, it does what it's supposed to. Now, the way I DJ is all about the live performance. In 2023... Anyone can play the Spotify records. Anyone can play the Beatport Top 10. Anyone can mix one record into another really smoothly. That stuff's easy now. We have the technology that makes that stuff easy. So what I want to bring to the table is the stuff that only happens once in a lifetime. Where I'm mixing one track into another in a specific way that's never going to happen like that ever again. I'm not trying to give people perfection. I'm trying to give people true live performance. And that is something that a robot or AI could never do. So to be very, very clear, I will never be pre-recording a set for any festival, for any club, for any event. I firmly stand for real DJing. That's what gets me excited and that's what people want to come and see me do when I play. Now back to the pre-recorded sets. If we rewind to like 10, 15 years ago, when people were using vinyl records or people were using early CDJs, they didn't have the technical ability that we have now with like modern CDJs and modern mixers. So I can understand why somebody might go on their laptop and create a set on some software that sounds super impressive, that's allowing them to do things that they're not able to do on the CDJs. 
However, today I believe that you can do anything you want to do on the CDJs. But ultimately what this comes down to, it's not me, it's not any other DJ. It's the people who go to the events and the people who buy the tickets. And if someone is happy to watch their favorite artist playing a pre-recorded set and they think it's entertaining and they have the best night, then who the f am I to say that's wrong? I have my way of DJing, other people have their way of DJing. And the great thing about this world is we're all able to do it however we want. So if the best way to entertain a crowd for you is to play a pre-recorded set, then go and pre-record the shit out of that set and entertain the shit out of the crowd. That's totally cool with me. And I'm going to stay over here, sweating my ass off, taking all the risks and mixing this shit live. This is real DJing. Who does this?